So the question is, why are the only CPUs from Intel and AMD? It's a big market. You'd think there'd be more companies making chips. Surprise, there are more big companies making chips, or at least there's a few small companies making chips. Via, which owns the remnants of Cyrex, IBM, Texas Instruments, and a few other companies actually still hold x86 licenses. IBM could, if they wished tomorrow, start manufacturing x86 chips again. And I say again, because back in the 90s, they were actually a fairly large manufacturer of x86 chips. Cyrex was fairly big back then, which was eventually sold to National Semiconductor, which sold off the parts to VIA, and it's actually an interesting story in and of itself. But there are budget x86 chips still out there, and whether or not they, they don't make them for installation into motherboards today, but they still make them as uh, integrated platforms, like where they sell a micro motherboard with a chip and a chipset and everything sort of all built into one. It was kind of the wind chip idea, which uh, integrated applications for specific uses that still run on x86 software, but those are made for uh, dedicated use machines and specifics, like an ATM machine. Correct. There's actually a lot of ATM machines that uh, actually still run o OS2, IBM's old OS2. Oh, wow. And so if the hardware fails, they need an x86 chip to run OS2, yep. but they don't need a modern chip. Mm. They need 20-year-old chips. And so they can go and get that stuff for really, really cheap, yep. but they get a modern manufacturer. They're not buying new old stock, they get a modern chip, but none of that matters to our audience. The reason why nobody else makes x86 chips today is because it is extremely expensive to build and develop and to manufacture and to design. Yep. It costs billions of dollars to do this today. It didn't used to. The original x86 processor had, if memory serves, 20 something thousand transistors, 29,000 transistors. Yeah, we, looked, we looked it up, it was. You could literally, if you had a big enough pegboard, lay out the transistors with wire on a pegboard the size of a wall. Today's transistors have tens of billions of transistors. You can't do that anymore. In fact, they don't even manually design them all. They, they have AI programs which actually lay out the transistors. Mm -hmm. No human is laying out. The, no. the new RTX 30 One, series has 30, two. 28 <laughs> Billion transistors. Bob's still going. No human laid those out. That was all. Good job, Bob. Yeah. But how, does, how does a computer do that? Very carefully. Very carefully. So the deal with CPUs is that back in the 90s, there were more than a half a dozen companies that made x86 chips. Mm. Not only did you have AMD, Intel, and Cyrex, you had IBM, you had Samsung, uh, Via, you had. Oh, you know, I'd have to look up the list. There were several smaller companies. You had companies like NextGen. Um, I actually owned a NextGen 5x86, which oh, I yeah. wish I had That's kept, true. but I'm sure I sold it. I needed the money at the time. And AMD, hang on, AMD actually bought NextGen because AMD's K5 sucked. Their 46 chips were great. Their K5 sucked and their K6 chip was in poor development. And so they bought NextGen and took NextGen 6x86, which had brilliant engineers, turned that into their K6 design team and came out with an awesome CPU. In fact, everything AMD released since then is derived from NextGen's work, not AMD's work. Interesting side story there. So to answer the question, if you wanted to make an x86 chip today, you would need A, a design license to have access to the patents, yep. and you would need to manufacture it in a facility that had a production license. That is why in the 90s, for example, Cyrex had a design license. Cyrex was able to design, using all the patents and all of the various technologies, a 46, and then ultimately when Intel lost the lawsuits, a Pentium-compatible chip. The reason they named it the Pentium was trademark issues, not copyright or patent. It was, it was all about the name. They didn't want everybody naming their chips the same thing. That's why they switched from 386, 486, 586 to, to Pentium. But Cyrex was able to design chips, and they came out with... Uh, 386 and 486 compatible chips, then eventually their 5X and 6X86 chips, which became the M.2 and a few others, which were both good and bad, which we're not going to get into the history of, but they didn't have a manufacturing license. They had to get the chip made, but they couldn't just have anybody make the chip. It had to be made somewhere that had a license to make chips. So Cyrex went to IBM and said, would you please make these chips for us? And, and IBM was like, sure, that looks nice. We'll make you a deal. We will make the chips for you so long as we get to make a copy for ourselves to sell 
for every one you make. So if Cyrex ordered 1 million x86 compatible chips, yeah. then IBM had the right to make 2 million, deliver the 1 million order to Cyrex, label the other million Intel x86 chips, and sell them themselves and keep all the profit, and not pay Cyrex any licensing fees. Ouch. And Cyrex had no choice but to take the deal. Ouch. And so IBM probably made some really good money off of that. So that answers the question as to why they don't today, because all those companies eventually got overrun with marketing and research development budgets mm -hmm. because it used to cost a hundred or two hundred million dollars to build a fab, a fabrication facility to build chips back then. Correct. Today, you can spend five billion dollars to build one new fabrication facility for these modern chips. And the number of companies that have that kind of money? Well, Global Foundries is not going to be making the 7 nanometer 5 or 3 anymore. And it's in one of the news articles because they've invested $20 million and they just don't want to invest anymore. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. So they're pulling the plug and they're not going to do it. Look so. how much trouble Intel has had trying to get down there. Correct. So you've got three companies. Samsung, TSMC, and Intel. Maybe. Global Foundries is leaving that. They're not even trying. Nope. And I would not be surprised if in the next five years, we're down to just two companies. It might be TSMC and Samsung, yep. or it might be TSMC and Intel, Intel, or they'll do a joint venture. Well, isn't Samsung doing a joint thing with ARM? Well, Samsung is also doing a thing with NVIDIA for the 30 series, exactly. and TSMC is doing a thing with Intel for yeah. the 6 nanometer. Exactly. They're all sleeping with them. Yeah. 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 It's all one big happy it family. Is. There we go. All right. Clip that XD. Thank you. All right.